Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Flight Simulator News and Updates. we got a couple different things for you guys. Some of it you probably already know. Some of it you may not. Some of it may even steer you to a different simulator. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, so first, right out of the gate, I don't normally add these kind of things to the uh, uh, news, but this one was really a fun aircraft to fly. I did a review on this aircraft yesterday. This is the Kit Fox Speedster Series 7, and it can be found on the Sim Marketplace for uh, 1099 euros. Um, it is very, very reasonably priced. It was a fun aircraft. I flew it even more yesterday after I did the review video and really had a great time with it. Um, and so I wanted to give it another big shout out. Uh, I really, really did have a lot of fun with this aircraft and truly recommend it. And biggest reasons is the price point to quality of, of simulation to enjoyment are right where they should be. It is a very fantastically aimed product. Next up on the list, we have Flying Iron Simulations F6F Hellcat preview video has been announced as well as a release date. We have Friday, September the 9th. That's going to be this Friday, guys, um, which is pretty awesome because my birthday is the 10th. So I'm definitely going to be picking up a copy of this aircraft and checking it out. The F6F Hellcat is an absolutely awesome aircraft, was definitely a very historical um, update, if you will, to the aircraft that were its predecessors. Um, it replaced many aircraft, such as the uh, F4U Corsair, um, as far as maneuverability, speed, and, and overall capability. is a very, very high-performing aircraft and really turned helped, helped turn the tables of World War II in the Pacific. Um, so really, really awesome. I'm really excited that they put this aircraft together. And the Warbird series in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I know in the beginning really got a lot of controversy and probably still is a pretty controversial topic uh, because you have things, for example, like DCS World, which we'll be touching on DCS World a little bit in this video. So stay tuned, guys. Um, but uh, Flying Iron Simulations has done such a wonderful job with all of their products. You have the Spitfire and the P-38 Lightning that really come to my mind first right out of the gate. Uh, the P-38 Lightning is probably one of my favorite aircraft of all time uh, just because of its iconic look and its overall performance. It's just a really neat aircraft. Uh, the F-6F Hellcat, ironically enough, was actually not one of my top 10 lists as far as you know World War II Warbirds kind of thing. But that does not take away from the fact that it's an absolutely amazing aircraft and I will still definitely be purchasing it. Um, now, I will say 45 Australian dollars is pretty steep. Um, however, 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 I'm going to say this one more time. However, the again, the quality to price point with flying iron simulations tends to be right line in line. So don't let the price necessarily steer you off. And if you guys want at all costs, by all means, just hold off until Sunday is when I will most likely have the review or I should say my first impressions uh, video out for the F6F. Uh, we're actually celebrating my birthday on uh, Saturday. Um, so I don't know that I'm actually going to have that out on that date, but we'll see what happens. I will do my best to be to honor you guys with my video of it. But make sure you guys check out a link in the description below. It will take you to this page here in which where you can very easily go to the YouTube uh, play of the F6F Hellcat in action. Next up, which I'm sure is really no shock to anybody watching this, X-Plane 12 has released its early access version of the simulator. It can be picked up for $59.99 US dollars, so no different than purchasing X-Plane 11. Now, give you guys a little bit of backstory here. Um, I've already done quite a few flights in X-Plane 11 or in X-Plane 12, excuse me. And I'm going to be very, very honest at this point. Um, I do consider it to be an upgraded version of X-Plane 11. I would definitely not at this point call it its own uh, simulator. Um, now, there are still many things that I do enjoy about it. And again, <laughs> I knew yesterday in my video that it was going to blow some things up. And by the way, we're going to be having another video coming out today where we'll be further expanding on the differences between x uh, 12 and Microsoft Flight Simulator. However, it did launch and there are quite a few things that I truly do enjoy about it. Um, I will say that certain aspects of the graphics, I think, are a bit easier on the eyes and look a little bit finer to me. However, there again, that was a statement of extreme controversy. 
Um, the default Cessna 172, I find to be very pleasant on the eyes. I think it looks very, very good in my personal opinion. Same thing with the ground textures. And when I say ground textures, I'm referring to uh, taxiways and, you know, runways, things like that. The other thing that I will say right off the bat that X-Plane 12 has, in my personal opinion, is I think it is far more challenging than Microsoft Flight Simulator, as I found out yesterday on my landings. Um, now, it is just not to say that it is not without its issues, guys, so you need to make sure that you do your research, watch plenty of reviews if you choose to dive in to X-Plane 12. Now, they do, just like before, they do have the demo installation. If you guys choose to do that, you can download a quick demo, but as it was before in X-Plane 11, it is extremely restricted. A couple of things that I will point out that I did miss about the X-Plane series is the overall configuration and settings interface. Uh, the interface is is much nicer, in my opinion, much less chunky and clunky than that of uh, other simulators. Um, it is much more responsive. The load times are much faster, so there are benefits to everything. I did notice an extreme FPS difference between the two. However, I want to make it very, very clear as I talk about FPS that this is just with a default installation of X-Plane 12. Start adding sceneries, third-party aircraft, third-party applications, and that FPS could find itself dropping very rapidly. So do not uh, take that and go, oh, it's going to have better FPS. I need to go that route. Don't do that because that could change once we start adding in some of the add-ons. Uh, again, so I would say my biggest perks that I have seen so far to X-Plane 12 is I did... My personal opinion, I thought the ground textures were better. Um, that does not mean the external or scenery to the airports or even the airports. The airport buildings themselves looked very pastel, very Crayola, if you will. Um, the ground textures were better. The aircraft textures were better. And I do believe the flight model was better. Now, I have very limited experience in a Cessna 172. Um, but landing the Cessna 172 in X-Plane 12 versus Microsoft Flight Simulator was far more challenging and definitely kept me on my toes far more. Um, so take everything with a grain of salt as well as from a single person's perspective. But I definitely recommend that you, if you guys, at least if you're halfway interested in it, at least download the demo and maybe you can find some solidifying facts or continue to watch the videos as I continue to put them out. Uh, there are plenty of things that have changed and there are plenty of things that are still going to change. It is very, very crucial to remember with X-Plane 12, if you choose to take the dive, it is on its second day of release. It is in early access. It is an infant, even if it is nothing more than an upgraded version of X-Plane 11, they are still essentially starting with a new product as it is not following the updates of X-Plane 11. So it's going to be a simulator that is built all on its own. There are many, many rumors spinning about X-Plane 12 and what is yet to come. Um, and some of them could even be right down to possible satellite imagery or something equivalent to. So keep that in mind. Uh, there's a lot more to discuss when it comes to X-Plane 12. So stay tuned. Next up on the list, we have SimWorks Studio shares an update about their Dash 7. The Dash 7 is a very highly anticipated aircraft uh, that's going to make certain areas of the world far more fun to fly in. Uh, one of them even, I believe, even being the Antarctic, although I can't see myself flying there, i got to be honest. Um, but I could definitely see myself using this aircraft around the Caribbean and maybe Southern and, and Central America, I think would be kind of fun. Um, so... The Dash 7 sounds like it's going through its final stages of development as they quote here in the uh, in the uh, article that the few last few layers of dirt and grime um, <laughs> are being put to the exterior textures as well as all of the finalizing the rivets. So they are piecing the last uh, external pieces to the aircraft away. And then the flight model is obviously being worked on as well as well as the cockpit, cockpit instrument and gauges. This is an aircraft I think that's going to be a ton of fun to fly. I really enjoy these kind of aircraft, um, and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to take it up to, for example, somewhere like this, uh, way up high in the mountains. And I can't, the only reason why I'm not mentioning the airport is because I can't think of the dang name for it. I forget it every single time it pops up. I forget the name of the airport, but I can tell just by looking, I know where they are. They're on that one that's got that very steep downhill uh, for the takeoff and the landing. Uh, just creepy airport, in my opinion. Um, but that's one that would be a ton of fun to fly this particular aircraft in. SimWorks Studio so far has put out nothing but fantastic products. I have had no issues with anything that they have dropped as of yet to date. Um, so I am certainly excited to be grabbing this one. Now, we do not have any kind of price point yet or an exact release date as with many of the aircraft that are currently coming. We know that there are a ton of aircraft that are currently being developed 
Um, but this is definitely one that I have been keeping an eye on. I've been trying to keep an eye on their forums for that and the Kodiak, which is briefly mentioned here. Uh, I know their Kodiak is going to be a pretty big one as well. As well as I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's also them doing their version of the PC-12. So they have quite a few things in the pro in the works right now that uh, SimWorks is uh, working on. Jumping overseas for just a minute, we have a DCS world update. And I guys, even if you're not a DCS pilot, just stick around for just a second because I got some things to talk about. So DCS is finally working on a C-130J that can be flown by us. Uh, this is the first iteration of any kind of cargo or transport aircraft that has been included in the simulator uh, that gives us the ability to fly it. And that's going to really open up a lot of logistical missions if you choose to fly that route. So they're starting to step away from some of these strictly combat-based aircraft and bringing us some multi-role purpose so that we could really start getting into some different kind of uh, options here. Now, DCS comes with a price point uh, and only when you are purchasing the aircraft. DCS itself is free to download and you get a very beautiful map of the Caucasus, Caucasus region. Um, and uh, you also get access to an SU-25 T and a P-51 trainer. There are multiple free aircraft that have already been developed for DCS World that I'm going to start doing a series on and breaking them down. I highly recommend you guys, if you guys are even, even if you're not interested in combat, giving DCS a go. Um, it is an extreme learning curve. All of the aircraft systems are fully modeled and they have a ton of a detail depending on which version you buy. Now, there are certain aircraft that you do have to watch for. For example, the Flaming Cliffs 3 series of aircraft are not uh, fully modeled cockpits, uh, meaning that all the buttons and switches can't be pushed and pressed. Everything's keyboard command. But anything outside of that, your singular aircraft, F-18, 16, MiG-21s, all kinds of different, my gosh, there's too many to mention at this point. Um, those are the aircraft that you pay for individually. And then there are maps outside of the Caucasus region um, that uh, um, can be purchased as well. But there are, I think, six or seven free, and a couple of them very high fidelity aircraft that you can also buy. One of them that comes to mind is the Community A4 Skyhawk. Uh, it is completely free. So you can download DCS World for completely free of charge, as well as the A4 Skyhawk completely free of charge and be able to fly with some buddies or do your own missions. Uh, it is a very, very awesome setup. So just in case anyone who's ever on the fence about DCS World, this would be a great time to start uh, jumping into it, given the fact there are so many. There's even an F-22 Raptor, which we'll be talking about later on this week. Guys, that's going to wrap up our news and updates for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, quick episode. I know there wasn't a ton of information today, uh, but there was some very big news today, in my opinion. So stick around. As always, guys, we'll have more coming down throughout the uh, day. We're going to be doing much more uh, or excuse me, many more X-Plane 12 videos. So that way you guys can get the best representation possible that I can provide um, as well as my genuine thoughts as I continue to use it. I also want to make it very clear to anybody who is currently a subscriber for Microsoft Flight Simulator. For me, Microsoft Flight Simulator isn't going anywhere. Okay, I am still going to be very, very heavy into Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I have absolutely no intention whatsoever of changing it. That was just to address a comment that I did see on one of my videos yesterday. Uh, so I just wanted to make that very clear. As always, guys, stay safe and healthy, and I'll catch you in the next one.